memory is a starting point, it's not the end point, but it's a very important starting point once they are in your memory when you grow. You can immediately pick up some episode, some event, and you can immediately connect to that. But this thing which happened in my life seems similar to that episode in Mahabharata. To be able to do that, first Mahabharata should be in your memory, Ramayana should be in your memory, and how will it be in your memory if it is in the form of a story? Or a direct. Concepts we tell to a five year old kid, he will not understand, but story he will understand and he will keep it. And story is like, it has many layers, it's like onion, you keep opening, opening, more layers, more layers, they keep coming up. Because reality is like that. So, we will, uh, uh, yeah, let's go to the next slide. Yeah, so any uh, word, usually in language, words have different levels of meanings. There are particularly three levels which uh, linguists discuss, in uh, traditional Indian linguists they discuss. Those three are called Abhida, Lakshana and Vyanjana. Abhida is just denoted, straight, you know, che is a chair, uh, fan is a fan, this is a light. It's just what the object it points to, that's what it names. That's it. It's a denoted. It denotes an object. It denotes an entity. But Lakshana is like a metaphor. It is a figurative thing. When we say someone is like a lion, it does not mean he has four legs and he has a mane and all those things. It means either he is courageous or his uh, you know, shout is like a roar of a lion. Many things and many upamanas we have in poetry. Your face is like a moon, your eyes are like lotus, all these are upamanas. These upamanas come in the second level which is Lakshana. The third is Vyajana which has Vyanya in it, which is indirectly saying some things. Like, uh, uh, suppose there is a girl who is leaving from home and her beloved is waiting for her outside. So she wants to actually tell the beloved that I am going to the temple, come there. But she doesn't say that directly. She shouts to her parents, I am going to the temple. But she is not communicating with them actually. She is actually communicating with the beloved. So that come there, we will meet there. So this is Vyajana. She is verbally not communicated to him, but at a semantic level she has communicated to him. Another example can be in films, you might have seen, suppose two people say A and B are conversing with each other. A after some point of time gets very irritated with B and A tells B, I don't speak to idiots. Then B replies, but I do. <laughs> now, he would have as well said, but you are also an idiot, I am speaking to you, that will be so dry now. It's nothing, you, the laugh which you got now, you wouldn't have got if that thing was said. So there is a bhav which is coming in this way of saying, which would be absent in some other way of saying. Though what is said is said, the man of saying is different. He didn't verbally say it, but he said it. This is Vyajana. There is some Yenya in that. Art is primarily to do with Lakshana and Vyajana and not Abhida. Abhida is like writing essays, not poetry. So, whatever just now we discussed, the interpretation of Ramayan as this thing, you know, maybe what reading is actually depicting body, that is like a Lakshana. Maybe Manas is like the charioteer. Sensor organs and motor organs are like horses. Body is like a chariot. It's like saying your face is like a moon, your eyes are like lotus. Just want to add a point here. The when he said the Atma is Rama, and the entire ensemble from the other kids were narrated, one indirectly gets to the point that Ramana is one body. Ramana is not. Ramayana is one body whose Atman is Ram. So this is this is said in another different way by Valmiki Giri Sanfuta, Rama Sagara Gami. Ramayana is, please let us not understand Ramayana as a story of Rama. It is born from the mountain of Valmiki, going towards a Sagara called Rama. The river is called Ramayana. Which means from that particular ocean called the name of the ocean is Rama, water has already evaporated, 
it is going to the breeze, when it met a mountain called Balmiki, it is literally cooling at that particular point, then pour down, and that cooling point took so many centuries to crystallize itself as Ramayana, and it flowed down. That does not mean Ramayana is going to go and feel Rama. Rama is a saga. Rama is actually a saga, it is a body. It is a body. It is Atman is Rama. That's why let us not understand the word Rama is only a man with a bow and arrow. That is one way which this particular story called Ramayana captures the essence of Rama. But there are many other ways which is exemplified in the fifth is the shloka called Rama Raksha. Rama Raksha says Rama has nothing to do with any man view. So there are different layers in which Rama, Rama is discussed, Ramayana is discussed. So to discuss that Atman is Rama has a very different method of saying what is the body that can what is Ramayana is the body, but the discussion of the Atman of Rama is very different. Yeah, just one more thing I wanted to add. Um, we were discussing saying that Rama is like the light, the Chaitanya, the consciousness, which gives in turn the light to the sense organs and activates them. This is also related to, you see, in Egyptian, Ra means sun. So here Rama is related to sun or light in that sense also. So many things get connected. When you start looking at words, words are very important. And you should start going beyond Abhida. When you listen to words or when you look at an artwork. When we are stuck with Abhida, whatever description is given to us, it's given, okay, Rama is someone with 16 Lakshanas. And he has you know, broad shoulders or this height or whatever it is. That is like, if you think, if you imagine only a physical person in front of you, that is like an Abhida way of imagining that. Fine. Can we go beyond that? Can we think of Lakshana way of imagining that? Can we think of Vyajanatma way of imagining that? Can we read these words at a different level? When that is done, a whole lot of things open up. And many of the gestures in dance also, they make more sense. Maybe they didn't do these gestures at Abhida level, that's why I can't, we can't visually depict something. They, they are so far removed from our visual understanding of objects. That's why we think we can't communicate gestures. Because in modernity, visual language, visual representation is shouting a lot, which was not a problem with tradition. We are so used to visual representation, photograph. Visually it is there, in photograph it is like that. In painting, if something is non-realistic, we say it is an abstract painting. Only realistic paintings are real, real paintings. Then uh, anything non-realistic, anything which I can't visually fit into my objects, daily objects, is an abstract painting. So we have lost that ability to look at objects, look at the forms non-visually. We visual form is shouting. We need to move away from that. That is shouting because Abhida is shouting. We should move beyond Abhida. Okay, go to the previous slide. Yeah. Um, so the third example which I want to give is culture. Um, see, like I was saying, art, it has to be more about Lakshana and Vinjana. One of the best examples which I think uh, one can find in um, sculpture is that of, uh, example of Vinjana is that of Patanjali. Why? I will tell you. Um, see, whatever say different senses we have, each one has a particular input. Like color can be perceived only through eyes, smell through nose, touch through skin, like that. No other sense organ can perceive them. Suppose I want to depict, say, uh, smell. I can write S M E L L there in English. That is like just pointing, denoting concept called smell. That's like Abhida. Or maybe I can put some coffee and then some kind of smoke or you know, some fumes coming out, hot coffee. That is kind of giving a sense of smell there. That is slightly not Abhida, but slightly indirectly indi uh, indicating smell. Similarly, say, if I want to encode sound, how do I, again, I can write a SOUND or I can put a musical instrument there or I can put different things there. But there is another way of depicting sound. Um, <coughs> rather than 
point into sound either directly like Abhida or Lakshana can sound be depicted indirectly as the difference between two things why is Patanjali half human and half snake at least almost I think all of us know how Patanjali is either looks it's half human and half snake why is human why is snake what has snake to do that meant by half human half snake now the shallowest way of reading this is such entities existed earlier which have gone into extinct right now like dinosaurs that is the shallowest way of reading it and then we try to prove scientifically we try to generate such beings scientifically that's like you know generating a monster that is not at all a being who is actually half human and half snake the significance of human and snake there is actually the difference between the two human is a being with five sense organs and snake is one of the epitomes of beings with four sense organs and what is the sense organ missing in snake? Yes. ear yes. so what is the difference between human and snake? sound so Patanjali is one Vyanjanatma way of depicting sound Sir, can I tell one difference between human and snake? Yeah. You, uh, human being is having five sense organs, no? Right, right. But uh, snake has a ear and tongue, isn't it? No, it doesn't have ears. Eyes and tongue only. All four sense organs touch, smell, uh, taste, and uh, sight. Yeah, no uh, sound. It, it cannot hear sound. But uh, it whistles, no? It can make sound, but it cannot hear sound. Yeah, but uh, I mean, I'm telling it hisses. Yes, it hisses. That is making sound. But if if some some other snake hisses, it can't hear. That is the problem. Okay, so why sound now? This is one way is okay, this looks neat, but one can add more uh, weight to it by saying, you see, whatever we know of Patanjali as uh, Patanjali is a great uh, grammarian who wrote a great text commentary called Mahabhashya on a text called uh, Ashtadhyayi, Padri Ashtadhyayi, which itself is a grammar of songs. And Patanjali cycle is found anywhere and everywhere in Chidambaran Temple. And in Chidambaran Temple, what do we find? Akasha Lingam. And Akasha, as a Buddha, its special quality is sound. Can you just go to the next slide? Next. Ah. So these are the Pancha Bhutas which we know Prithvi, Aap, Tejo, Vayu, Akash. And each of these Bhutas, they have a Visesha Guna. They have a special quality. Prithvi's special quality is Ganga. Our special quality is Rasa and then Tejas, Rupa, Vayu, Sparsha, Akasha, Shadda. Now, don't translate them as earth, water, fire, air, etc. because they completely jumble up our imagination of these elements. Don't translate them into English. These are very subtle elements. Whenever you see an object, it is usually composed of all the five. That's why you can find color in it, you can touch it, you can taste it, you can smell it. Because it is constituted of all the Bhutas, you can get sound from it. So, Akasha, why is Chidambaran main deity is termed Akashlinga? What has Akasha to do with that? And why is Patanjali there only mainly in Chidambaran and not other Shiva temples? Similarly, there is another story which we know of Vayu Linga. It's recalled as thing. Why? We all know the story. It is Kanapa who has given his eyes to that Linga when uh, blood is coming from those eyes. How does he do that? The last step is he touches that portion with his foot to place his eye exactly there. The touch becomes important there. That is why and touch is the special quality of Vayu. That is why it is called Vayu Linga. Now these are some kind of encodings. You see, so what I am trying to say is all these art forms, whether it is dance or sculpture or music or theatre or whatever it is, they are picking up subjects which have something to do with entire reality and cosmos and our own individual beings what is the nature of my being, what is the nature of reality how do I encode it these are all different forms of encoding we are unable to decode them right now because we don't 
study other things, we think, if I study this, I will understand this. No, you will not understand that because the other thing which you are supposed to study, it can be a Shastra, it can be philosophy, it can be anything, that is very much related to this, as this is related to this. We compartmentalize subjects now. Okay, that's philosophy. I have nothing to do with that's music, I have nothing to do with that. There are even people who say that. I mean, in future, that uh, already we know some students in uh, some students who we know. I, I don't want to learn music, but I want to learn dance. Now, this the way this seems absurd to you. Now, if we say I don't want to learn philosophy, but I want to learn music and dance, that would seem absurd to earlier people because they would not see the disconnect between them. The way we are not seeing disconnect between music and dance. Next generation will see disconnect between music and dance. That's it. Everything is compartmentalized. You to decode these things, you need to know many things. You need to work at least. If you don't know yourself, at least you should work in unison with other people of different areas to decode these things. Maybe a scientist will give you a solution, or maybe a mathematician will give you a solution, and you may give a solution to a mathematical theorem. Both ways it can work. Okay. Last thing, gestures. Just go back to the previous slide. Yeah. Gesture is the most important because I want to test that. I mean, right now I just want to speak of uh, I just want to speak of a dance gesture. Two examples. Um, I, I request Jason to just show that the gesture, old time gesture for um, sleep. The common gesture what we go from understanding about this as a gesture of sleep. Yeah. So, what has that to do with sleep? Does anyone sleep like this? <laughs> no one sleeps like that. What has that to do with sleep? Nowadays, how people depict sleep, they actually lie on the floor. Almost. That is a very visual Abhida kind of representing sleep. What he showed, that is actually Virjanarma way of depicting sleep. Why? Because what actually happened is a formal way. This is one of the best examples of a formal way of depicting sleep. The line down on floor is the most informal way of depicting sleep. And it's the visual form is being captured there. The essence of sleep is not being captured. I can lie down, but I need not sleep. I can sit and sleep also. Now, how do you distinguish this sleep from lying on the stage? But this thing, whenever it happens, it is sleep. Why? What is actually happening there is when we sleep, you see, there are, um, like we discussed, there is body, and then there is manas, which is atomic, and then there is atma. Manas has to be in contact with the sense organs for it to get the knowledge of the vishay of the sense organs. So there are four levels of contacts. One is the object, object and sense organ contact, then sense organ and manas contact, then manas and atma contact. If any of these contacts breaks in this chain, then we can't get knowledge of the object. Now when we sleep, we know we don't get knowledge of our sensations, sort of sleep. All these things happen. Why? Because Manas takes rest. How does Manas take rest? Usually in the day, it keeps rotating and revolving, running around everywhere. But in sleep, it goes and parks itself. And it parks here. The, the place where it parks is called Puratatma Nadi. And people call it is in between the ribcage, somewhere. The Nadi is that gets activated when you sleep. So sleep cannot happen here, it has happened here. This is the place where the manas gets parked itself during sleep. So what, what do we mean by parking? Now the connection between the three connections which we spoke of, sense order and object, object and uh, sorry, yeah, object and sense order, sense order and manas, manas and uh, atman. Two connections get split. That Kartre Mukha is actually saying the link between manas and body gets split, and the link between manas and atman gets split. Not fully, but partially. Because it gets split, we can't get any sensation at that time. And that, that state is called sleep. Just an extension of the same thought, when that sleep gets a bigger, bigger sleep, there is not the other gesture used, the same gesture is used. Yeah, the same gesture is used where this becomes prolonged. This becomes a prolonged thing so it can't revoke that. So gesture is not putting a tongue out. Time. There is no gesture of, formally there is no Drishti Veda of closing an eye. 
दृष्टि पे दस नो क्रोसिंग एंड आई जेस्टर इन डांसिंग शास्त्र से बच्चों की निमित्त दृष्टि फर्स्ट ऑफ़ क्रोसिंग आई फॉर्मली इज़ नॉट अलाउड इन एस ओ यंत्र आत्मा के एस ओ इधर यू वांट टू सेल इट्स फाइन जस्ट वन मोर थिंग यू वांट एक्ट दिस पॉइंट इस इस दैट होल्डिंग अ शिवलिंग अ मेनी पीपल आर कमिंग अप वेरी डिफरेंट पॉइंट्स व्हिच विल ब्रेक इट हियर आई कम टू द एंड ऑफ इट बट दिस सिग्निफिकेंटली हैव दिस डिस्कशन इस कम शिवलिंग अ इस लिंग अ व्हाट यू डिस्कस अबाउट शार्प यू नो आकाश लिंग अ आई वांट मी देयर इज नथिंग कॉल्ड अ स्टोन देयर इट्स विश्वकर्मांस वे ब्रॉट टू द क्षेत्र टू इंस्टॉल और रिप्लेस दैट आईडिया विद अ स्टोन द लिंग इज ऑलरेडी एस्टैब्लिश्ड देयर लिंग इज अ कट इन तमिल पीपल से लिंग नो वन सेज लिंग एस्टैब्लिश्ड वो इस तरह के जैसे लिंग का कट्टर, लिंग का तो कटना हो, ये तो नॉट एट इंस्टॉल। लिंग का ऐसा आइडिया फर्स्ट ऑफ़ ऑल, द आइडिया कैन बी मेड इनटू अ स्टोन, इनटू वर्ड, इनटू पोइट्री, इनटू मेनी मेनी थिंग्स। लिंग का तो वाद है कि फॉर्टिफाइड मीनिंग्स हैं, जैसे डिफरेंट थिंग्स। But to bring all the fortified meanings into gesture, someone has, some genius has created a gesture like this. This has nothing to do with the shape of a linga, please. Don't equate that to a shape of a no. Uh, this one, Aulayar and uh, this one, Banam has nothing to do with this. And people have gone to a level of showing linga like this. Most of ever this. No, it has nothing to do with the formalness of this because it can mean all the what my meanings into one. Because this can some problem when you show that only as a stone. What happened to the verbal linga? What happened to the to the both the lingas? It has nothing to do with shape. There are lingas in the different. Please note, in there are only five or six lingas. What we know, there are many, many Buddha lingas which we have not installed. We have not installed it in stone. The geniusity of the gesture scientists, if you want to call them, the gesture scientists have given you to capture the entire idea of the linga into the Ashikara and Adi Shankar. That's it. It has nothing to do with a shape, a visual shouting shape of a. Vanam and the Aurea. Yeah, I would just conclude with saying that so all these are examples when we are saying formal, the point is to understand the essence of that entity. What is the essence of sleep? What happens when we sleep? It is not actually visually lying down or sitting. Manas gets disconnected. But to know this and to put it into a gesture, those people should have known that fact. And those people should have known, understood the workings of body. So how? Maybe they they would have actually uh, been experts in Ayurveda. They would have been experts in Vaisheshik. They would have been experts in uh, Sankhya, Yoga, all these things. Without knowing these things, how does one put it into a gesture? Now, let's leave all those things. Suppose we want to put say modern day-to-day -day things which are around us into a gesture. Like Jason was telling me, someone wants to show a, a cell phone. They are doing this. Cell phone has nothing, or a computer. They are doing this. Computer has nothing to do with the shape. There are computers in lights. There are sensors. When you walk in, light glows. When you go out, light switches off. That is a computer. There is a sensor there. Sensor is a computer. Computation can it be depicted rather than the visual form of a cell phone or a tab? So how do we create these gestures right now, today? We need to understand that subject as well as we understand our skill, syntax. That's the only point which. So that's why so foundations of dance, which we are. So dance, you might have come with a lot of imagination. Someone will demonstrate. You know, dance means dancers will come. They will actually do dance. Sorry, there is nothing like that. By now, I think you would have got an idea that how much dance space can be extended than physical movement of body. Now, those foundations will be discussed in this workshop. One thing, at least we are coming to an end of the session. But as a workshop, I think you have coolly recourse to the le lecture board here. I can see that. But uh, we need some work back. Certainly, yes. just for attempt as a group. As a group can be, can be, we need not crystallize this. As a project, as a group, can put our heads together and find a gesture for computer. Which can seem to be familiar in the current era, the urban current era. Computer has nothing to do with CPU in the sense monitor, keyboard, nothing. 
If at all you know what a computer is, can all of us put our head together, all the 50 heads or 100, 70 heads are here? Can we evolve one gesture? It need not, it can be thoroughly wrong, but that does not mean it stops us from working. Can we put one gesture, it's the significant gesture of this modern era, for a computer? Can we evolve one gesture for it? Formally, not shape voice. Part of this lecture, second day ending, we will come up with something. Let us keep thinking. This is a backdrop work. Fine. So, a, a prolonged introduction <laughs> for you all. So, we break now, and with a very, according to the formal <laughs> invitation, it's one and a half hour, one hour break for you all. We'll cut it to 10 or 15 minutes. Let us be back. <laughs> we are very green. Please finish your lunch quickly, as quickly as possible, and please.